medium to large companies surveyed recently say they expect to ditch their health care benefits for their employees once key provisions of the president's new health care law take effect in 2014. So what does that mean for businesses, workers, and our economy? Ben Ferguson is the host of The Ben Ferguson Show, aired through Icon Radio Network. And Simon Rosenberg is director of the progressive tank NDN and a former advisor to President Clinton's campaign. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. So, sure. Ben, be uh, this is, you know, not what anybody really wants to hear, whether you support the president and this law or not. But the suggestion is that nearly one out of every ten mid to large size employees, employers expects to stop giving their employees health care coverage now in the wake and, of this and, law. Well, can I... I think it's going to go higher because the fines that the president's put in his bill are obviously put there to entice people to get rid of the private sector and jump on this government plan. And that's what a lot of these businesses are looking that? at. They're looking at a cost issue. Well, you can pay the fine, and it's probably going to be less expensive to the company than it would be if you offer private insurance. And so a lot of small businesses right now that are already penny-pitching, I mean, you know how big of a deal it is to have benefits. As an average American out there, you need health insurance. And if they can get it from the government for cheaper than what it costs them on their bottom line, pay a little fine, you're going to have government health care for everybody. I'm a small business guy, and you look at that bottom line, and a lot of Americans are going to be forced to be on a government plan, even though the president said, oh, you can keep your own. Look, if it's too expensive, guess what? You're going to government plan whether you like it or not, and that's sad for America. And yet, Simon, you know, do you think employers are really going to do that? Because that's compensation. I mean, that's part of your deal. You're going to have a lot of unhappy employees uh, if they go ahead and do that. First of all, Megan, welcome back. It's good to see you. Thank you and, very much. Uh, we, we missed you. We missed you. Uh, so I think Ben's wrong. I, I, don't, I think that companies that don't offer health insurance will be at a competitive disadvantage uh, against their competitors. I think the fines are going to be substantial. Even this survey showed that only 8%, uh, 1 out of 12 companies are even thinking about it right now. And I think that, look, what we know about this health care plan is that it's not going to be perfect. There are going to be things that... We know that it's going to cut health care costs and it's going to cover more people, but over the next 10 to 15 years, there are going to have to be tweaks. And if too many companies are opting out, then that will have to be addressed. But I don't think it's as big a problem as Ben is saying. Companies that let and that don't offer their own health insurance will be at an incredible competitive disadvantage to other companies that, that don't offer health but insurance. That, but that makes intuitive sense, Ben. That makes intuitive sense. But the question, I guess, is, is that, it, unfortunately, is that no theory, longer the I mean, reality got, in this economy? That you can't, you know, you can't be yeah, a, but you, that, you, um, a beggar can't be a chooser, look, in other words. Yeah. Look at how many people are unemployed right now. That's part of the big X factor of this. Look at how many people have not been getting raises, in fact, have been taking cuts in pay and benefits. There is a lot of leverage in the private sector right now with employees. You don't have the same ability to walk into your office anymore, your boss, and say, hey, I deserve a good raise right now because I've been good. A lot of people are in this situation where they feel like they're just lucky to have a job. And if an employer says, look, health care is getting too expensive, this is a great way for them to kind of wipe their hands of the situation and go, good news is you're still going to have this government plan that Obama gave you. And a lot of citizens are going to say, I still got a job and I'm happy with that. It's an easy out with the fine for, for these companies to get away from it and save a little cash. And that's not what the system should have done to give everybody really good health care. And I blame and the president for it. Simon, to ben, what extent? What should we have done? Ben, let, let me just throw a couple done? numbers at yeah. you, Simon, then, yeah. and I want to yeah. get your response. So sure. it's nearly one in ten mid to large size employers say they expect to off stop offering health care. Another 20% said that they're unsure what they're going to do. Yeah. Um, but my question to you is to what extent, Simon, do you think these are just ticked off employers who don't like the law, who, when given a survey, say, no, I'm, I'm ending the whole thing. But when push comes I to shove, they're not going to do it. I don't think we really know what's going to happen. I mean, let's just be fair about this. What we do know is that way too many people in the United States today don't have health insurance, and health care is too expensive for everybody. It's going up too much now. This new plan is going to cut costs in health care and expand coverage Yeah, but to those more are just people. talking points yeah. that, are, that in support of the law. This is what well, I'm trying to get you to focus on. The Congress you know, Office I mean, says that's not true. No, no, but if I mean, the, the employers are going to start cutting our health care coverage, get upset. But there are a lot of employers that don't offer health insurance now, and these are people that are just uninsured. And I think the point is that we made a decision as a country to go ahead with this new health care plan several years ago. No, we did Which didn't. is going to cover more people. I think we did. It became the law, Ben, unfortunately No, the for majority you. of Americans that, said that, they didn't want it. Ben, ben, so we're covering more people and we're controlling costs. This system but we were is supposed not to be able to keep the coverage system, that we Megan, had. 
The system Megan, isn't. The, the, the American people the, said they did not want this bill, and the and the facts prove that in the surveys and the polling, the majority of Americans did not want an overhaul of the system. What we should have done, and he asked this question a moment ago, is you fix insurance and have it available at a fair price to people that are uninsured right now. You work with people with pre-existing conditions, maybe. But the president went too far to say everyone one mandates has to have insurance, okay. which takes away freedom of choice. And second of all, we didn't need a complete overhaul. You should have fixed. Okay. Okay. small issues and not done it for everybody. I got, Simon, I give you the last word. Uh, I think we're going to have a better health care system. There are going to be tweaks along the way. I'm proud of what the president did. Nice and pithy. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Good to see you both. <laughs> Thanks, ben, Megan. Simon, see you soon. Thanks. Well, we've heard countless remarks.